Okay, we're ready for section two of chapter five, dealing with rational exponents. So we're basically going to do everything that we did in section one, only now instead of working with just integers, we're going to work with uh, uh, exponents that are fractions. Exponents that are fractions, i.e. rational numbers. Now they don't have to be a fraction, but, but, but usually they are, especially in this section. Okay, so if you have 25 raised to, say, the one-half power, that really means that you're taking the square root of 25 to the first power. This outside number becomes this number right there. Now, usually when we do a square root, we don't even put the 2. It's just kind of implied. That number is called the index. Write that down because that's an important number. It's called the index. Well, that really just means that you're trying to break down 25 into its prime factors, and you're looking for twins since you're finding the square root. And since there are twins, you take one of them, he gets out of jail, and his buddy, unfortunately, didn't make it. So 5 gets out. That's why this 25 to the 1 half power is 5. Type it into your calculator if you don't believe me. All right, here we go. What about 16 to the 1 fourth power? 16 to the 1 fourth power. Okay, this time the index is going to be 4. It's the, uh, the fourth root of 16. So to break out of jail, you need four people to get out, but only one survives. Only one survives. Well, how can we break down 16? It's really 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So circle him. He gets out. Yay, he got out. But remember, three only. he's the only one that survives. The other three had to, unfortunately, not make it. I call this game, like, I call it circle slash. So that time we had to play circle slash slash slash. We'll try this one. Now, this time, 8 to the 2 third power, you need three of them. But only two of them are going to live. Instead of one of them, two of them live. So let's think about this. This really is the cube root of 8 squared, or you could rewrite it as the cube root of 8, the whole thing, squared. We'll break down 8, and this time instead of looking for twins or quadruplets, you're looking for triplets. So this is really the cube root of, let's see here, 2 times 2 times 2, right? Okay, remember, we need two of them. We need two of them. Uh, let's see here, uh, squared, he lives, he lives, he dies, so two twos get out, that gives us two times two, answer, four, another way you could thought about it is this, what's the cube root of eight, just tell me the cube root of eight, well the cube root of eight is two. Oh, but wait a minute, it's squared, well that answer, four, boom, perfect, either way works, in general, Okay, if you have b to some fractional power, okay, then q is the index. b to the p over q, so it would be the qth root of b to the p power, or the qth root of b, the whole thing, raised to the p power. That p is flexible. It can go in, inside out, okay? This right here, and this is important, what I'm about to write. This is called exponential form. I want you to write that exponential form. This guy right here, or well, both of these, these are called radical form. And we're going to be alluding to those terms a lot. Exponential and radical. We'll use those terms a lot, so you need to get those written down. If you see a radical, it's in radical form. If you don't see it radical, it's in exponential form. Now, if you have a simple guy like just b to the 1 over q power, we just say that's the qth root of b to the first power, but we don't write the first power because it's kind of implied. So let's start off with some simple ones. Here we go. Here, 81 to the 1 fourth power. What's the index? This really is the fourth root of 81. Now, the fourth root of 81 uh, can be done pretty simply because it is a perfect fourth power. The answer is just 3. If you want, you can break him down. He's really 9 and 9, 3 and 3. So that's really 3, 3, 3, 3. I need quadruplets, which I have them, but only one of them lives. So live, slash, 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 answer 3. You can also do this on your calculator by just typing 81 to the 1 fourth power. 
Yeah, let me show you how to type that in real quick. All right, here's my calculator. So, first thing I'll just do 81. Oh, let me delete that. Raised to the parentheses, one fourth power. Da -da -da, that's three. Or you could have done this. You could have said, see this little x root right there? You could have done four second x root. That means the fourth root of 81. Enter. Oh, not negative. Enter. And it's also 3. So I don't want you to rely on your calculators, but your calculators are a good way to check to make sure that you're doing these right. Okay, here we go. Part B, 27 to the 2 thirds. Well, this really says it's in exponential form. Let's switch it to radical form. That's always a good strategy. Now, how many of you know 27 squared? I don't. So guess what? I'm going to rewrite it the other way and put the squared on the outside. Because I do know the cube root of 27. The cube root of 27 is 3. This really says 3 squared. 9, cha-ching. Or you could have done this. You could have said, oh, well, that's the cube root of 3 times 3 times 3. But I want two of them this time. He lives, he lives, and he dies. Answer is still 9. Let's try letter C. What do we do for this one? The cube root of 8... That thing should be squared to the negative first power. Hmm, well, there's a lot of different ways you could approach this. Do you know the cube root of 8? I do. The cube root of 8 is 2. And now it just says 2 to the second power to the negative first power. Power to a power, multiply, it's 2 to the negative second power. He's not happy. Where would he be happy? He'd be happy in the bottom. Uh, it's really 1 over 4. Or, I could have put 1 over 2 to the second power, which is 1 fourth. There's three or four different other ways I can think of to do that one. I could have said, well, eight, the cube root of 8 is really 8 to the 1 third. And then I could have multiplied all three of those powers. So it's really 8 to the negative um, 2 thirds power. Ugh, that looks disgusting right there, but it'll get you to where you need to go. You'll still end up with 1 fourth. Okay. All right, what do we got here? I have the square root of x times the cube root of x times the sixth root of x. Now, a good strategy when you're in radical form is to switch to exponential form. It doesn't always work, but it often can help. So the square root of x is really x to the one-half power. And the cube root of x is really x to the one-third power. And the 6th root of x is really x to the 1 6th power. Okay. Um, same base. Oh, side by side. Side by side means what? Add them. Add them. This is really x to the 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 sixth. Now, you can't quite add those fractions yet because you need common denominators. Okay. So this is really uh, 3 sixths plus 2 sixths, plus 1 sixth. So that's really x to the 6 sixth power. Oh, well that's just x. Uh, look at that. This nasty hunk of junk is really just the same thing as saying x. So the next time instead of, you know, when you're saying your ABCs, instead of saying x, when you get to x, say the square root of x times the cube root of x times the sixth root of x. And you're really just saying x. But you'll sound really smart for it. Okay, now let's get to a tough one. Here we go. This is the letter E. So I've got y to the negative one-third minus 3y to the two-thirds all over y to the negative four-thirds. Now, here's what I recommend doing on this one, although you don't have to do it like this. Since I've got this minus sign, since I'm subtracting a binomial on top and a monomial on the bottom, I would split this into two fractions. So do the split approach. That's what we're going to call this. So this is really y to the negative one-third power over y to the negative four-thirds power minus 3y to the two-thirds power over y to the negative four-thirds power. Again, this is called the split approach. Now what? What would you guys recommend doing? Well, I see negative exponents. And when I see negative exponents, I see exponents that aren't very happy. So 
let's move every negative exponent we can see. Here's one. He goes to the bottom. Here's one. He goes to the top. The two-thirds is happy, but here's one. He needs to go to the top. So let's see what this says now. This will say, on top, y to the four-thirds over y to the one-third. They're happy now. Minus 3 y to the two-thirds times y to the four-thirds. Okay, well now I have mono divide mono means subtract the powers. Well, four-thirds minus one-third, that's just three-thirds. Oh, wait a minute, that's just y to the first power. And here I have side by side, that means add them, add them. So this is really minus 3y to the 6 thirds power. We'll clean that up a little bit. So it's really just y minus 3y squared. And since those are not like terms, you can't combine them. You have no negative exponents. You done. That's all you can do. There were about 14 other ways we could have done that problem. But that's the one that seemed attractive to me at the time. Okay, another one where we can do it multiple ways. Now, what's a good strategy here? A good strategy is if it's written in radical form to rewrite it in exponential form. So, let's see here. We have the square root of 2x to the fifth. The square root of 2x to the fifth. And the square root of 2x to the ninth. Hmm. Well, that really means this is 2x to the one-half power. Ask yourself if you know what I just did right there. Square root means one-half power, and the whole thing is still to the fifth power. So on the top, do you agree with me? This really just says 2x to the five-halves power. That's right, 2x to the five, because power to a power means you multiply. Similarly, the bottom will just be 2x to the nine-halves power. So here's a question. Folks, is 2x the same thing as 2x? That means you have the same base. And when you have the same base, guess what you can do with those powers? Subtract them. So this is really 2x to the 5 halves. Take away 9 halves. Oh, that's just really 2x to the negative 4 halves. Wait a minute, negative 4 halves, that's stupid. That's really just what? That's 2x to the negative 2. Yes. Now, question, are you done? Ah, uh, you're not. You're not done. Because the 2x is not happy. Where would he be happy? He'd be happier in the bottom. And now he's happy with a positive 2 sitting above him. Are you squaring the 2 or the x? Or both? Ah, you're squaring both. This really says 1 over... Where my pen go? 1 over 4x squared, where x cannot be 0. And that's it. So this nasty hunk of junk, when you simplify it, is really 1 over 4x squared. Sweet. That was cool. Okay. Oh, look at this one. I'm getting so excited. Okay. What could we do? Oh, we've got all sorts of options here. This one, there's about 17 ways to do it. I would distribute on top if you want. So when you distribute, what do you do with the powers? They're side by side, so you add them. So this really says 2x to the, uh, let's see here. Oh, problem here, guys. This should not be negative 2 thirds. This should be negative 3 halves. My fault. Now that makes it a little bit more, a little more sense. Negative 3 halves plus 1 half is negative 2 halves. That's just negative 1. And then when you go to the second guy, Negative 3 halves plus negative a half is negative 4 halves. Well, that's just negative 2. And the bottom is just x to the negative first power still. Now I would do the split approach. The split approach is where you split it into two fractions. Come on, do the split approach with me. You know it's fun. You know you want to. Sweet. Okay, um... Now move whoever's not happy. Or wait a minute, you can just think of it like this. x to the negative 1 over x to the negative 1, those just go away. That's really just 2. And the second guy, let's see here. That would be x would go to the top, x squared would go to the bottom. 
Well, you can hack and slash that bad boy a little bit. That's just one of racks. Done. Finished. Finito. That's it. Another way you could have done this one. See this guy in the bottom? And this is what a lot of kids like to do, I've found over the years. Is just bump him up to the top and combine that negative one with the negative three halves. Because they'll be side by side. So when he goes to the top, remember, he's happy now. So it's really X to the first power when he goes to the top. Side by side, add them. So now, 1 plus negative 3 halves is negative 1 half. And then nothing else about the top guy would have changed. Distribute the power. Side by side means add. Negative a half plus a half. Well, that, that's 0. And negative a half plus negative half, that's negative 1. X to the 0 power? What is that? Do you remember from section 1? That's... That's just one. Oh, I forgot to put this two in there, didn't I? So there should be a two here. It says two x to the zero power. Well, that really just says two times one, which is two, minus, he's not happy, so bump him to the bottom, one over x, and now he's happy. Finished. That's it. All right, folks. You're really not doing anything differently compared to what you did in section one. You're still just working with the laws of exponents. But you've got to have a comfortable grasp over how to do a lot of the things that you learned back in pre-algebra, like common denominators and multiplying fractions and things like that, to really maximize your potential in this section. Make sure you're asking me any questions that you might have. I will catch you all later. In part two, I'm out of here.